Go. Okay, I'm going to show you how to tie a gold ribbed hare's ear. Now, hare's ears are really popular. They're found in most fly shops. And this is going to be a pretty typical standard one that you'll see on the market. And it catches fish on pretty much every river that, you, that you'll run into. First thing you do is start the thread behind the wire. I've got some lead wire on here. Just add a little bit of weight. I like my flies to be weighted. Get them down a little deeper to the fish. Then I put a few wraps over the lead just to kind of secure it in. And then I'm going to take the thread and wrap it back to where the hook starts to bend. Now for a tail, I'm going to tie in some partridge. I really like partridge. Moves really well in the water when it gets wet. really comes to life. It's really good material. I'm going to leave a kind of a bushy tail. I like flies that are real lifelike. Really not impersonistic, but uh, they come to life in the water. They move, they wiggle. They don't necessarily look like the real thing, but they have a lot of action to them. And that's what this fly is. Next thing we're going to do is tie in the rib material. For that, it's going to be just a piece of gold tinsel. We're going to tie it all in back to the same point. After we get that in, we're going to take some hair's ear dubbing. Put it on the thread. Now, this dubbing that I'm using, it's got a little bit of sparkle in it. I think that attracts the fish a little bit better as well. One thing I didn't mention is that I'm tying this on a curved hook. It's actually a scud hook. I like to tie my nymphs on curved hooks. I think it makes them look a little more, a little more realistic. The right shape. After you get some dubbing on your thread, go ahead and dub the body. You don't want to wrap it too tight. This fly can be bushy. It's going to catch some fish that way. And you're going to take it to about the two-thirds mark. I'm going to go ahead and put in a half hitch. Now we're going to take our rib material. We're going to go ahead and give this a nice segmented rib. It's going to be four or five turns probably. This is a size 12. I actually tie this fly anywhere from typically in size 16 down to size 12. But you can go a little smaller, size 18s if you'd like, and a little bigger, size 10s as well. Next thing I'm going to do is take the wean case material, which is just some turkey quill. Take tur four or five turkey quills. Tie them into that same point. Now we're going to take some more of that same dubbing. Pretty good gob this time, and we're going to just ball it on the on the thread. Put some nice, nice wraps. There we go. Pull our turkey quill up behind the bead. A few more wraps. Now I like to put a wrap in front as well. A few wraps that helps secure the wraps that you put behind tying down the material. Now we're almost done with this fly. We're going to whip finish, whip finish it once. Five or six turns there. Now before we cut our thread, we're going to take some Velcro. We're going to brush out this dubbing and give this fly some legs. Make it look a little bushy here. And then I usually whip finish my nymphs twice. You don't have to, but I think it makes them a little more durable. Put a little bit of head cement and this fly is done. And like I say, it's a real effective fly. I fish it in a lot of rivers. Most rivers have mayflies and that's typically what this imitates. It can imitate just about anything in a river, really. Um, but mayflies are a very valuable food source to trout and that's what it looks like. So there you go.